have you been up to? I've been riding on a daydream. Hey YouTube, thanks for checking out RV Daydream and look who's with us finally. Hi. Uh, what we're doing is an impromptu trip to West Branch Campground and that's because uh, my daughter and her friends are all kind of out of, out of food <laughs> and they're bored and they've got stuff they need to do and you know they're just kids <laughs> so we're gonna go get the uh, camper we're going to uh, go out to West Branch and bring her home even though we have another day or so out there don't we tomorrow yeah tonight yeah tonight. yeah yeah uh, if Heidi was off like she normally is, let me fix this camera a little bit. Um, on Thursday, we probably could have went out there, but oh well, she's working actually on her day off, and she got a meeting, and then uh, she's off on Friday, which we're going to take a trip down to Rogers. It's supposed to be relatively nice out that day, so that's what we're doing. And I'm trying to use some different cameras here because. Quite honestly, I can't handle um, doing all the conversion and everything from this 1080 30 frame second uh, new Vicam. Turn back the traffic light. From the uh, new Vicam, which is a good camera. Some of the footage you've seen was worse than it normally would be, but it's because of the dash mount that I have. It's getting a little bit loose and the camera's not supported. If I would have mounted up on the windshield, it'd be really nice, but still, it's the wrong frame rate. So, as you've seen in that video, I was trying to show you that uh, bird strike in the slow-mo, and it didn't convert very well. So, uh, I went back to uh, two action cams. Uh, the one you're watching us here on is an old AS20 uh, from Sony, and then the uh, other one that's out the windshield is our AS100V. So. We're gonna head out to the campground, grab the trailer, and come back. It's probably gonna be dark, so there won't be a lot of driving or anything like that, but I just thought I'd throw up the cameras, and if we decide to talk about something, we'll do it. All right, so here's the shortcut that takes you to the campground relatively quick, but it is bumpy to bump, bump, bumpy. In three and a half miles, turn right on Copeland Road. It's not that it's got a lot of potholes, which it does have those too. Um, it's just they pave over with just asphalt, however, it decides to go down and it goes down. Now, this section of road's really smooth, like I said, because it's a different township. But once we get so far, it'll change into. Uh, It'll change to bumps and dips and hills. Luckily, these cameras have built-in image stabilization, so they take care of a lot of the stuff that's going on, but you'll still see us rocking around. I mean, even this smooth part of the road is... <laughs> it's... Uh, yeah, it's just got a lot of bouncing to it. Pets on this road. Went to Dairy Queen one day. So we're heading out. Uh, like I said, it's going to be dark here shortly. So if uh, anything exciting happens, we'll uh, we'll clue you guys in. Like Bigfoot. Yeah, like Bigfoot. Should be Bigfoot out there. I say that Bigfoot's in every state. Yeah, Salt Fork's the one. They want 675 for this little sunlight. All right, let the bumps begin. And the speed limit's like 50 on this road. We're doing about 50. 46 going down this hill. Here come some bumps. So if you 
you guys come visit West Branch and you're coming from the Pennsylvania area, your GPS tells you to turn on Rock Springs Road. You better make sure you're turning off of State Route 59 onto Rock Springs Road. Because you're coming the other way. It's rough. It's not that it's you can't do it. You just have to take your time and go really slow. Our camper bounced around quite a bit first couple times we came this way. Definitely don't take this way if the, there's a detour. Yeah. <laughs> detour you down. Uh, where was it? Here? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I think it was. Oh, okay. Yeah, that was kind of goofy. They didn't tell you the road was closed till you got through all those bumps and everything close to the campground. Then they told you to make a left and go back out on the road you could have been on the whole time. Yeah, yeah, they redid all these guardrails and the bridge. just going to stay the night out here tonight instead. <laughs> She's going to call off sick to work tomorrow. In one half mile, turn right on Copeland Road. That's not happening. Sometimes I wish you could. How many times have you called off sick? Only once that I can remember calling off sick. I remember you were sick like two days in a row or three. Yeah, that was... That was bad. I don't remember what it was you had. Sinus or something. Oh, yeah, that was sick. It was my cigarette. Turn right on Copeland Road. Oh, you lost your cigarettes. So saddened. That's horrible. It's the worst thing ever. All right, so it's getting darker. The sun's definitely going down, and we are at the office, the check-in. Which I have a parking pass, so I can just kind of drive through. Is the office open yet? Oh, yeah, yeah, they were open. Yeah. Okay, guys, we're here. Well, here's the campsite. Yeah, they did okay. They got the awning back together for the most part. They had some corn. <laughs> There's people out there in the woods. And they left some firewood, so we're going to pick that up and throw it in the trunk because they didn't have any room at all, which was sad on their part. So we'll uh, make sure I'm going to pull the awning out, make sure there's no leaves and twigs and stuff up there. And then uh, we'll get this thing packed up and out the door. Pretty nice though. Really wish we uh, were staying. Let's just stay high. <laughs> All right, let's get to work. Hey guys, as you can see, we're back at the house and it's the next day. Uh, it got late and dark real fast. Uh, we went through the camper and we did a, a pretty heavy flush on the tanks uh, because we weren't sure how much they used them. And of course, like I said, the gray water tank was just open. So we filled the gray water tank and uh, flushed the black tank a couple of times. And by the time we got all hooked up, we were doing it in the dark. And quite honestly, it was the first time really that I was uh, driving in the dark as far as pulling the camper and uh, you know trying to back into our parking space out here and all that stuff so it was uh, it was a nice change as far as letting me experience something like that because I hadn't really towed too much at night uh, so definitely different I think that I would like to see some better lighting on my wheels uh, I was thinking if I was going to be backing into a campsite that was dark and we were doing it at night, 
I would definitely have to set up some sort of lighting system to uh, illuminate the wheels so I could see the edge of the camper pad when I was backing it up. So that was kind of different. So we're back at home and it is a gorgeous day out. It's still a little bit on the chilly side. It's only going to be 65 today. Uh, again, I'm an 80 degree kind of guy. I need to feel sweat coming off of myself. So I'm in a jacket again and there's some wind. So. Uh, you're gonna have some of that noise, but let me tell you what we're doing today. Just a gorgeous day. Look how nice it is. I mean, there's a few clouds way over there, but holy cow, it is nice. Really glad I got the yard mode. Just one thing off the list. Then I had to drive the truck through the yard. But yeah, we got here late last night. Uh, I think we left the campgrounds uh, around 10:30. That sounds about right. And got back here even later, obviously. So I got some work to do. And when I said, "Oh, I'll tell you what we're doing," it's basically what I'm doing. So let's jump in here real quick. The helicopter landing at the airport. I wonder why. Usually, uh, Medivac's the only one that might land over there. We have an airport that's uh, behind that church quite a ways. You can see them landing there. Hmm. First thing we got to do is clean up a mess, and that's my old radiator. Uh, that there's nothing wrong with it apparently. Um, I uh, think it might need a cleaning, so I've got that on Craigslist. I get to eventually get to my turn signals, which are still sitting there, but I've got to work on this customer's moped because I can't let that go. Uh, I got the part in the other day, and I just haven't had a chance to come out here and do it because it wasn't really nice enough weather to be riding on it anyways. It was cold and rainy, but now we're going to get a stretch of warm weather. I want to get this done. You can see I still have tools laying out from my repair. Uh, I didn't know if I was going to have to break back into something necessarily, so um, it's a good idea to keep all your tools out. Don't put them away and then find out you need them to get them out again. Uh, the cooling problem still sort of exists, which we've discussed to some level. And uh, again, I've got some gauges coming today, UPS. Hopefully I can get them uh, at least kind of started as far as the installation goes. I've got to get my son to work later today, so I can't tear into the truck too much or have it tore apart. And of course, clean up the tools back here too, which I had some uh, vacuum gauges. I was doing some vacuum testing and stuff like that. So, uh, of course, I had my Ford Bible that I bought back in 92 or 91, and I read this I'm telling you, read the cover off of it. <laughs> that's why it's so war. And I pretty much know everything that's in that book, and I just use it for reference. That's why I stick with those older Fords, because once I committed that to memory the way that I did, I uh, didn't want to have to relearn. I got my R Village bumper sticker and got it on the front of the camper here. Figured I'd try to put it into place, although this camper's really dirty. Boy, this, I, this needs cleaned. Um, I tried to put it in a place in which uh, maybe people could see it whenever we were camping. And we got something else. I'll show you. Hey, we got a new license plate. It's reflective. Kind of cool, huh? We're going to mount that differently. I don't like the way this is. This is the way it is from the factory. When we get new tail lights that are LEDs, hopefully the bracket mount is flush. If not, I'm going to mount this flush, and then I've got a frame for this one down here that I haven't put on yet. Again, what a beautiful day. God, I just hate to be in this garage even working. I like to take my work and be working out in the driveway. That's what I got going on today. Just basic house cleaning. <laughs> uh, cleaning up and getting this work done. My daughter, uh, as I mentioned last night, uh, she 
had to have us come get the camper a little bit early because they, I think, were bored more than anything else. They said they ran out of food. Um, and, you know, it's just one of those things. I, I remember when Kaidi and I first camped, uh, when we tent camped, or even when we had our pop-up, we would reserve like a week, maybe 10 days. And then by the, I don't know, sixth day, we were kind of like, and eh, seventh day. And if it was 10 days, we, that we, there's times we've left the day early. We're like, yeah, screw it. We're not even staying tonight. You know, it might be four o'clock in the afternoon. And we're like, you know what? I'm not staying tonight. Let's just go ahead and take off. And it wasn't so much that we didn't like the place or we were bored or anything like that. It's just, we didn't really have any more to explore. And I would guess that that's probably going to be the case whenever we go out, you know, full timing or camping. I think that helicopter's taking off. Oh no, I see what they're doing. They're doing uh, landings. I don't know if I'll be able to catch it this time. Yeah, he come in at a different approach. So they're doing touch and goes, that's what they're doing. That happens a lot out here with the military. So what I was saying is that, you know, when we're full timing, I could see where we might get bored with an area relatively quick. Let me see if I can get you guys out of the sun there, or in the sun. So 10 days, I would think would be enough to explore an area. Um, I don't know if that's 100% true. We'll just have to get out there and do that. But that's what happened to them. They, they explored the area a little bit and they were ready to go home and uh, don't have any problems with that. So that's why we pulled the camper back. Makes it nice because actually we were thinking that they were going to be checking out on Friday morning or uh, Friday before one. And Friday, Heidi's off and my son's off. And of course, my work, if I can get it done here, uh, I'll have enough time that I can take off and we'll all go down to uh, Rogers flea market I covered the 4th of July flea market at Rogers you can check out that video I'll put a card up here for it so that'll allow us to do it now seeing how the campers already here and she's not checking out on Friday so that's good um, but everything performed well in the camper for them and I was happy that they got to experience it and now it's time for work. So I just didn't want to leave that video that we did last night open-ended. Uh, we actually had the cameras running on the way home. It's like, well, this is dark. I ain't going to be able to see anything. And there really wasn't anything to see. Heidi and I got into some philosophical discussions about her pay and stuff like that. It's something to do with Obama and him wanting to pass some sort of law on salary and workers getting paid uh, more than... Uh, time, you know, getting time and a half, anything over 40 hours or something like that. Her work is definitely not going to go for that because they love working their salary people. She makes a decent amount of money an hour, but whenever you consider the hours that she puts in and the amount of time, I mean, being on call and all that stuff, it, it does put a dampener on it. And I remember there was a time that being a salary employee, that was a big deal. That was, it meant that you had it made, basically. You know, you could, uh, not worry, your weekly pay was going to be the same if you had a doctor's appointment or if you uh, took a long lunch or anything like that. You know, as long as you got your work done, which most salary workers did, um, you were going to get paid. And the thing about it was, a couple of places I worked at, the salary workers um, could put in for comp time. So let's say a week you had to work 60 hours, and then the next week you had to work 50 hours. Well, it was on a two week pay cycle. So what you would do is put comp time in for 30 hours in which you could get paid for it. Well, they don't do any of that. I don't know any places that hardly do that anymore. Um, it's kind of like they are throwing you to bone and saying, hey, you're now a manager and you're getting paid salary and boy, isn't this great. And uh, then they work you to death. Uh, we did the math and she would be almost better off just working part time at uh, you know, just slightly above minimum wage than working her salary position, which that's a sad state right there. But she loves her job. Uh, she likes the responsibility. It, it keeps her busy. Um, so we'll have to have more discussions on that in the future, which we'll try and include you guys maybe on that one day. All right. So enough yakking. Let me get to work. And as always, guys, I hope to see you out there, especially if the days look like today. Man, it's just beautiful. All right, back to work. Bye.